My name is Imani Perry. This is from South to America. On January 24th, 1804, there was a ball in New Orleans to celebrate the purchase of Louisiana. There had already been numerous celebratory balls, and as with previous ones, some Spaniards came, some French Creoles too, white ones, and the Americans. Ladies' gowns were empire-waisted, peach, mango, pale blue, and green. The men's coats were embroidered elaborately. A fight broke out between two of them. Only five weeks into a shared citizenship, and the Americans were already encroaching too much. Yes, there were two French songs played to each English one, but the Americans took too long to finish a turn. Unlike the French quadrilles that started eight dancers at a time, in the American set dances, each couple went one by one. Their procession dragged on past the length of the music. Someone called for another English song, and a French Creole struck the speaker. An officer grabbed the Creole. The head of the provisional government, William C. C. Claiborne, saw the conflict brew brewing. He couldn't speak French or Spanish. His words of calm were empty. Several dozen men brawled in the ballroom. Louisiana had just become part of this nation, and with that, the United States of America had doubled in size. But the local dancers were taking part in a, in a negotiation that had an old root. It was called in some circles the stately quadrille. As in the dance, the empires circled around each other, entering and exiting alliances, all while vying for control of land that had been conquered and claimed far away from their mother countries. New Orleans was a perfect example. It had been French, then Spanish, then French again, and now American. That night in New Orleans was three centuries after Europeans had arrived in the Americas, generations into the process of settlement and conquest, slavery and incorporation. It was still contested territory. The Africans danced quadrilles too, out of doors in Congo Square on Sundays, and they did the kalenda, hips shimming until they touched a partners, then easing back in unison. They did the bambula in a round. The women's head ties were as bright as they could be. Some hawked kala and popcorn. Some brought word of the revolution in Haiti. They were Virginians, Bajans, Bimi, Edo, and Congo, and native Orleanians. They danced to fiddles on beat, on other days, they danced to flogs, jumping away from searing pain. The Americans, white people, stood around the perimeter and watched and learned. A flock of black skimmers might have flown over the slave pens that night or rested their callow jailbirds. How could they know their presence taunted, that the people inside wished they could fly, or that the nights they were up Bodies rubbed with beef tallow, hair painted to gleaming black, faces scrubbed, had the most terrible foreboding. Sail tomorrow. Thank you.